You are listening to Let's Go Jojo, the weekly Jojo's Bizarre Adventure podcast from Dynamite in the Brain and Secret of the Sailor Madness. On today's show, we have Niall Flanagan. Ahoy, hoy. Anthony Askew. Hello. Dwayne Maloney. Hello. And me, Brian Smith. This week's episode, Set Celesi Part 1. But first, the week in Jojo's news, such that it was, <laughs> there was very little Jojo's news this week. Uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Part 1 got a physical release. All right. In, uh, America. There you go. That's the week in Jojo's news. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas, there's, there's too much on top of things. You're like, yeah, you're probably like getting, like, news they were planned to put out for like the next couple of weeks. I was getting news from October better. for some reason. So it may have just been that Google Alerts was playing silly buggers. From October 2015. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> In which case, good news, Niall, there's a new series of JoJo's starting in January. All right. <laughs> Part five, here we come. <laughs> Is there no, like, lists or anything? Like, no, it's second and no, some lists? No, there's lots of articles where JoJo's was mentioned as, like, this is a bit like JoJo's. But uh, <laughs> nothing really JoJo's related. It was all the same things we talked about last week. Like, and, of course, probably minutes after we finish recording this podcast, somebody will come in my email, which will be brand new huge, and exciting. Huge! It'll be huge! God. More baby names. <laughs> so, that gives us much more time to talk about Polymer F's Wang. Dwayne, you're doing the <laughs> synopsis this week. I'm going to Expert talk as little about that as possible, <laughs> if I can help it. So, uh, take it away. Right, so, uh, we start off with some adorable children playing, I guess, like, you know, mud pie kind of games, which I think, oh, that's adorable, and then I instantly thought, this is JoJo, so they're probably going to be murdered in a second, so I was really worried. Uh, and as soon as one of the kids bumps into a guy uh, and spills mud on his legs, and he's being super nice, but this guy has, like, old lady glasses, pigtails, and bells in his hair, so you know he's a bad guy, a stand user. Um, and then uh, once he realizes, he asks, he's like, where's your mammy? Oh, where's your daddy? They're not around. Right, I can beat the shit out of you. What a bastard. But anyway, so he goes off. He's this vindictive, assholey guy. It's the shadow stand user we've seen in the last episode. And uh, Polnareff is kind of on the ball here. Because he actually kind of spots him sneaking along. It kind of cuts to Iggy wandering off and not helping in the fight from the previous episode. What a dick. But anyway. Um, yeah, Palmer uh, sees the stand user uh, coming like a mile away. Jotaro is, doesn't spot him at all because he's freaking crap. But uh, he manages, uh, he threatens the dude. The dude very poorly pretends that, uh, is it Alessi? Yeah, Alessi. Yeah, yeah Alessi. Uh, before, just before he'd done this, he was talking to himself about how underhand he was going to be, <laughs> how sneaky he was going to be to kill Joe Taro and Paul Yeah, Ruff. showing off to the audience that I guess he's he's going to be, like, really good. <laughs> His powers are great, I guess. So kind of, like, I don't know, hinting that he's better than he is. But So, yeah, Paul Ruff, uh manages, uh, like, it th- basically threatens him with Star Platinum to stab him up because he knows for a fact this dude is totally a stand user. Chariot. Yeah. Um, with Silver Chariot, obviously. Because that would be kind of weird if you just stabbed him up with a knife in the street. Well, no, you said he was threatened with Star Platinum. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Star <laughs> Platinum is nowhere to be off, seen. I'm going to invite <laughs> stand on to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he might have to do that later. But anyway, uh, he managed to hop out of the way in pretty style and fashion. But as he's chasing the dude, who uh, Leslie, who runs down some CG uh, uh, back alleys and stuff, Paul Riff noticed his perspective is slightly shifting. And then he manages to run into what appears to be a giant. Also, his voice has gotten really high-pitched. I wonder why. Um, his perspective has kind of shifted, and he thinks he's in a land of giants or something for a second. Then he realizes, oh, wait, I've been turned into a little kid. Um, when he sees Jotaro on the street, he, re- he he calls out to him, but then he doesn't remember his name because his mind is also regressing to his mind as a child. So he doesn't remember the things he knows as an adult. So, I don't know, that's like time travel or something. It's very odd. And so Alessi decides to kick him into an alley and somehow manages to get him caught on the ceiling of an alley with pipes on it or something like that. <laughs> it's like um, an um, awning for a shop or something. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's just where, like, the uh, water's coming through. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, he, his stand, like, it much, like, I thought it was quite clever. He actually brought, like, a gun. <laughs> so he pulls, <laughs> he pulls a gun and puts a silencer on it out of his jacket. I was like, why don't all the bad guys stand here also have a gun? He that brought seems the really emperor. useful. He brought the emperor. Like, <laughs> yeah, but bring to... a real gun too. <laughs> like, he tells us he has two stands right now. He got his own stand and also the emperor. Or the emperor light anyway. <laughs> emperor light. Uh, but, um, 
the the bullets are deflected by Silver Chariot, and we're like, oh, he's still a Silver Chariot, but Silver Chariot is an adorable child version, which has its own sound effect now. Pammy, did, Pammy? Did it always say that? I don't think it ever said oh, anything. I, I don't think it ever said anything. Yeah. Hmm. But anyway, um, when that doesn't work, he pulls out an axe out of the other side of his jacket, which I guess its name is AX. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> he uses his stand to kind of stretch up and the the shadow of the stand, uh, the shadow of the axe, the stand can also use as an axe. It kind of pops out of the whatever it's being a shadow on. Um, so yeah, that happens. And then, ah, oh, crap! I can't remember how Polnareff gets out of that. Hmm. Oh, he actually <laughs> he deflects it with the with Cherry's blade, which pops off, and your man's laughing away. Is like, ah, you're so useless. And then it flies into the side of his neck. Yeah, same trick as Anubis. <laughs> Except he starts breaking down and crying like a child, which is kind of great. Um, Paul Ruff manages to run away, gets caught by some lady, and is like, hey, where's your mom and dad? Oh, I'll take you home and wash you. And then there's a very disturbing sequence <laughs> where, um, uh, I don't know, Paul Ruff is like, I should be feeling things that aren't there. And then we get to look at Paul Ruff's child dick, which is... Uh, oh, come on. I was going to yeah. say, tell us how it is, but... no. But that's just what happens, and it's just like this is this is an entirely weird situation. It's only made slightly better by Palmer acting more and more like a baby as it goes on. So it's like, okay, this isn't as weird as it was. It's still pretty weird. Um, and so yeah, he realizes that he he went off with her because he won't attack while there's uh, unless he won't attack while there's an adult around because he just wants to beat up little kids, the asshole. Um, but while she's shampooing his hair, at some point, unless he. Slid his shadow under the thing and started shampooing Polnareff's hair just to be weird, just to make it super weird hey, for everybody. He's not a weirdo for, <laughs> he knows people think he's a weirdo, so therefore he's not a weirdo. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> that's how his logic works. <laughs> yeah, so we're left with Polnareff, uh, about to be, again, axed by Alessi Stan. I think I covered most things there. I think you did, yes. Oh, um, Iggy stole someone's, uh, kebab. Yeah, that's an important plot point. <laughs> <laughs> Iggy was getting his breakfast, <laughs> even if nobody else was. Not helping Joseph and um, uh, I'm getting on my name. Abdal. Actually. Yeah, Joseph and Abdal getting attacked in last week's episode. They reused a bit of animation there. I was wondering whether they sparing it or what. But it was mostly just shots of Iggy just going like, "I'm not helping him." <laughs> Jerk. Guys, are in a real fix right there. But, uh, <laughs> you shouldn't have got out of control. I'll, I'll leave you to it. <laughs> it's the non-plus look on his face. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving how much Iggy's a dick. <laughs> just every time you see him, he's doing something. He's just like, uh, he's, why did they get this guy? He's not helping. <laughs> he's the foreman, you know, he's just kind of supervised and saying, go, 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 go walk over there, guys. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think that's, that's most of it. Did I forget anything or? Uh, I think, it's, I think that's the uh, general gist of it. Mm. So did you think it was a very good episode? Oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. I love the, the perspective shots. I think that was so well done. And obviously I knew what was going to happen. Now, but nothing was kind of a shock, but it just looks... It was very, very clever to use... it To keep it going for that long and kind of get the dog licking his face and wanting it to look good. And see his, like, first-person view. The, the, the perspective of the, of the dude on the bicycle seemed really odd. <laughs> the guy who nearly <laughs> runs Polnareff over on his bike. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just the fact that Big Muscly do it on a bicycle. It looks weird. <laughs> um, oh, man, yeah, that, it, it was quite fun. Also, Paul Ruff, as a child, appeared to have, um, uh, what's his name from the last arc? Uh, Stroheim's haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's the less vertical. Yeah, yeah, it's less yeah. off, yeah. But, but, yeah. but now we know that that hairstyle is pretty much all natural. <laughs> didn't even wash the thing. It just, it yeah, just grows shampoo. that way. <laughs> Some people, like, you know, they have a natural kind of side parting or center parting. Paul Nerf just goes straight up. That's yeah. that's just the way of it. It all grows at the exact same rate, straight up, completely flat. <laughs> and he also had very, bi very big book teeth as well as a child. Oh, yeah, very like, cute. Pretty ugly <laughs> kid. Nearly vampire book. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. I would like to watch like a, a Shin Chan style comic comedy with <laughs> young Paul Nareff. Well, the second half of this episode pretty well, which was I hope, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was. <laughs> like, this goes that, really true. good, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> she washes his winky and it makes a little ding sound effect and 
it was great. It's everything I'd want from a young Polner F episode. <laughs> Would you want to watch a uh, JoJo's Babies spin-off with all the characters as small children? If it was kind of that borderline <laughs> dodgy, yes. <laughs> If, in you, the in the best way possible. <laughs> what would you do with the characters who are already children or babies? They'd be adults. <laughs> <laughs> that would just that would be great. Yeah, it'd be like um, I was I couldn't remember what's it would be like Freaky Friday. Yes, yeah, so the small oh, pages. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, no. Well, that's it. We got even Joseph is a baby, but he's also still got the beard. Exactly. Of course. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, okay. That's it, that that or I walk. Okay. <laughs> That's a good idea, you know. DD JoJo's. Is Iggy going to be a big dog? I don't know, because he's, he's a Boston Terrier, so I don't know whether that's supposed to be how he imagines an adult Boston Terrier to look, <laughs> or whether he's a puppy, just a really tough puppy Boston Terrier. He'd be a cat. He did steal a kebab as big as his own torso. <laughs> well, he does have a stand. I, I want to see more of Ziggy's stand. I know now is not the time, but... Uh, how will. do you know it's not there the whole time? It's made of sand. That's true, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, 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 there's, there's the, the JoJo's pet fight coming up in a, in a little while, so <gasps> you can see more of them then. Anything uh, else? Sorry. Yeah, the uh, voice actress playing um, young Polnareff is Ayumi Fujimura, who is in lots of things I did not watch. But the one thing I did watch, where she's playing a similar character is uh, Kill the Kill, where she was Mako's little brother. Yeah, Matt Tarot. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's the only thing I might have seen here. Oh, uh, I know he was in um, Shin Mazinger, um, the ZN, the, 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 the giant robot with Boba Mazinger. As, oh, it's uh, the little brother. A, a Shiro Kabuto, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to assume most of these ones, which aren't a woman's name, she was playing young boys. Yes, rambunctious little, little scamp, I guess. <laughs> yeah. As I mentioned last week, in case you, in case you missed it last week, and if so, shame on you, but, um, Alessi is voiced by Masaya Onosaka, who is probably best known for playing the one and only fascist stampede. <laughs> oh, I see, she was also knee socks in Pantheon Stocking. Alright. Uh, the evil versions of them. So, Alessi's named after, like, a, what, a, a pop duo? Uh, the Alessi brothers, I think we mentioned last week. Mm. Not as I was claiming on Twitter, the Alessi twins from Neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great, though. Just out, um, out himself as a Neighbours fan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they get Neighbours in Japan. They might do, because it's quite cl- close geographically. Oh, you know, it's, it's the same as here. <laughs> yes. Like, they just bring it over and they, they just, they don't change it at all. It's just like, ah, here, it's a soap, it'll do. <laughs> they don't even <laughs> subtitle it, they don't even do <laughs> <dumb> it. <laughs> well, the Alessi the twins' term. first appearance was early 1990, so. Who knows, Who knows? Maybe I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be great. Um, he kind of looks like Gary Glitter as well. <laughs> that is unfortunate, that's when especially the considering recent... the episode. Yes, yes, and I, I was kind of like, "Oh, please don't think this," but it's too late. I did, and but no, it's all innocent fun. All no, innocent not fun. really. No, he wants to murder a child. Yeah, but he's washing his hair. He's <laughs> he's kneading <laughs> it in. Creepy. He's ah. disappointed that he's got to shoot at the child rather than torture him to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess he's a dodgy guy. Yeah, that I does be- look like Gary Glitter. He really hits kids. I think I think he really hits kids because they rightfully mock him for his ridiculous appearance. He's yeah. like, "Fuck it, get get you back." I just like the idea that he thought he was going to be able to sneak up on them dressed the way he was with bells in his hair. Yeah, it's the bells that set him off first. I was like, "What the fuck is jingling?" And he, he's just the gods like, oh, I dropped my loose change. Uh, where is it? Patting himself down kind of thing. It's like, yeah. dude, you're not going to do it. You look like nothing else looks like around here. <laughs> like he's, he is staring intently at their backs like, and like, uh, Polnareff is like, one, what are you staring at? You creep, you're, okay, you're an enemy standing user, right? But I heard you, but oh, no, no, I'm not. Like, I, I wonder, you no, know, when, when like the menacing, menacing, menacing comes up on the screen, like, can, 
Can the guy see that? I went. <laughs> make it a is, that, is that the sound Polnareff heard and not the bells? He heard the menacing sound effect. Possibly, yeah. Maybe that it's like a uh, <laughs> secondary stand effect. That, uh, <laughs> you can hear the sound menacing. <laughs> yes. I think Polnareff said, I can see your, your eyes have the deadly intent. Murderous intent. That was it, yes. Yeah. And he says, they're not, they're my parents' eyes. Yeah, Polnareff generated the sound effect <laughs> stare as well. Didn't yes, he? I love that. He kind of rolled down his cheek. Like the symbols, like, yeah. Alessi like, Brothers. Hats off to Polnareff, he's yeah. got it. The Alessi Brothers had one UK hit, apparently, O oh, Laurie, in 1977. Ooh, that hmm. long ago. I okay. don't know if I've ever heard it. Considering <laughs> I've never heard of the Alessi Brothers. No, I've never heard of them either. Till now, it's. Had you heard of Cars before this? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I okay. used one to get to work every day. No, <laughs> the band! <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, yes. Uh, he's just putting these musical tastes out there. What do you, what, okay, besides the pigtails and the bells and stuff, what's the deal with the old lady glasses? I kinda like the glasses. Really? <laughs> yeah, I think they're less old lady and more, I don't know, kinda John Lennon wannabe. No, he just, he just looks more like, like, a, like a secretary in, in like, his office in America. Yeah. I guess. I guess. <laughs> He's a dodgy looking character. But I love the look of his stand, so I'll, I'll give him minus points for the bells, plus <laughs> points for the stand. I, I do yeah. like the way when the stand was holding the axe, it's, it's like, uh, it's not a reflection of the hand, it's the, st it's the hand, uh, the as a shadow, so it's, it's holding the axe backwards. I'm not exa oh, exactly I didn't sure how it's that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Mm. Mm. Uh, um, I, I just well, I know after um, Silver Chariot Baby is blade rico ricochets and then gets Alessi in the neck, and then um, I'm Polar to escape. We see this later on, you know, we see that he's been crying in the meantime <laughs> over the getting stabbed in the neck. Well, the blows are all over his, all over his like all over his, his neck. He's trying to clutch, he's clutching the wound. Also, you can see he's been clearly been crying and bawling in a in most disgusting manner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, not used to this kind of thing. Like what? Generally, I turn him into a kid and just shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> Will we see the other characters as kids next week? Will we see Drew Toro as a child? I'm gonna keep mom on this. Oh, okay. I mm. hope so because I think he'd look hilarious. I would like to see a baby Joseph with a beard, but you know, I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> we already know what he looks like as a young man, anyway. So. Yeah, but we don't know what it looks like with a baby with a beard. <laughs> Um, so that, actually, um, what horror film is this? If well, any? I'm wondering whether they are, he's doing horror films anymore. I was th thinking what I thought that it was just, just like reverse big. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> after oh, your yeah. crack, your yeah. cracking theory about it being Ernest goes to jail <laughs> or whatever it was, <laughs> I would. Yeah, I would if he's just moved off horror films for these lot. He's just doing mm. his favorite movies now. Hmm. <laughs> What I've seen in the cinema this week. Uh, <laughs> Actually, when was Big Out? 88. That... Oh, shit. Hmm. Definitely were out. And Not there was a lot of then. other similar things around the time as well. Mm. Mm. Like Freaky 18 Friday again and... Yeah. Uh, no, Freaky Friday was the one which wasn't around around that point. That I, was... thought, I thought that was a remake. Yeah, but the uh, remake was much later than... Oh. So the original was much earlier than Big and the remake was much later than Big. Right, right. It's a story you can recycle and use again to great effect. I think we need a modern day big. I think we have. Well, no, we had um, Zac Efron and Ma Matthew Perry swapping bodies, didn't they? In one. Was it Matthew Perry for Channel from Friends? Yes. Yeah. I didn't know he was in. That. I knew <laughs> was it was that? Zac Efron, but I didn't know it was him. Was this? Mm. I think that's no, that, right. was, that wasn't thirteen going on thirty. No, that, that, that's the other way around. Seventeen <laughs> again. Seventeen yeah. again. Okay. See, it's a. Tried and proven <laughs> methods. <laughs> of good the, is the stand design based off something? Because it's really freaky. The, the weird sort of spinning top head with the human eyeballs. Um, couldn't find it. No, like, like it was, it was say on the tarot card or whatever that of TV, of TV, yeah, a different yeah. guy. It's for some kind of um, like a Birdman thing, and and that's the way it looks like based on. You're supposed to be able to see the. The stand's form and I can't turn his head and profile and all the beak and things and it looks similar to that again, but uh 
Unless the top of the head is supposed to be a beak or something. Yeah, or some kind of, like, crest or, like, you know, mm. maybe it's some kind of, like, cockatoo <laughs> cardinal <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> like, you know, I always thought Set was, like, some kind of wild dog. You know, we would be Anubis was, was a jackal. I thought, like, yeah, yeah. Set was, like, some kind of um, other kind of wild canine thing, but I guess I was wrong. Mm. Hmm. So best episode yet? Uh, I just think it was very good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's, good. Uh, uh, it's, it's about par, you know, but there have been episodes I've enjoyed more. Well, and there's definitely uh, one, the one after the next one I'm looking forward to, possibly even my entire life. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's got to it be the be most... Un- <laughs> this one has to be the most uncomfortable I've been in Jojo for a while now. I don't know, last week's was kind of... Setting us up with the whole Avdol and Joseph getting very close, and then this just knocked it out of the park. <coughs> the humour, I was, I was creased. It was great. It was hilarious. Um, well, but as for dogs sparring at people's faces, that's <laughs> that wasn't gonna laugh out of me. Oh, actually, another thing in the way Jojo wasn't on the ball today. Um, friggin', he sees a little kid with silver hair that's spiked up, and he's like, "Hey, have you seen like a French dude with a haircut like yours?" Also, he's wearing exactly those clothes. I, I mean, like, literally, those are the same size clothes that he wears. Because who else I wears, like, a leather top? Nobody with a would realize that. Nobody. But no, nobody. Man, fans are weird, dude. Anything yeah, could happen. I guess, I guess anything could happen, but it's, that is, like, the extreme. But I would not believe it. I would have been with Joe Toro walking off. Like, if, if I was, if I was these guys and I saw Joseph walk around the corner and then a particularly, like, fuzzy, gray-haired dog came around the other side, I would assume it was Joseph. And that was a stand user because you just assume these things. Anything can happen, dude. The last stand was a plug. <laughs> That's true. Oh, anything. Can happen. One last thing I just remembered is that yeah. right near the start when they're looking for uh, Avdol and Joseph, mm. is Polder F says that this sort of thing wouldn't have happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> that I was perfect. I was like around that scene as well. George Arrow was saying, regard down Polder F. They're like, who do you think I am, Joe Tarrell? I've, I've, who do you think you're talking to? I'm not talking to you, Pond the Ref, with a history of, of this thing happening to you. <laughs> and sure enough, it does again. Uh, well, like, if, if the old, if you, 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 you get a little bit kind of faked out, and say, nah, I, I tried to just stand out, I, I said, up, up behind me, but didn't realize that all it takes is like one second, one little brush off of your own shadow for it to take an effect on you. Yeah, I think so, I think Joe Tarry just thought that not even Polnareff would have been <laughs> foolish enough to get himself turned into a child. Uh, uh, I, I was just thinking this was nearly a reversal of Polnareff's luck with bathrooms. Until obviously a creepy dude starts walking into <laughs> yes. hair, then uh, then it becomes the same problem again. Yeah, bathrooms are a problem. I assume that's why Joe Tara checked the bathroom in the in the hotel room and Polnareff stayed in the room. <laughs> like, I'm not going near one near it. <laughs> Probably like a standard disguise as the faucet. It's going to like, like, like <laughs> come alive and strangle you or something like that and <laughs> I'm not going to have no part of it. <laughs> the toilet will turn into a swirling vortex and it was like, like, like pull you in into the emotional pocket and never, never be seen again. Well, we have seen a stand that could potentially turn into a toilet, and we've seen a stand that's made of water. So, yeah, that's to- that could totally happen. Look, <laughs> 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 comes along. We fought that guy and that guy. How about both guys at the same time? <laughs> uh, man, he keeps pulling weird powers out of his uh, out of his bag of tricks. I, uh, I I quite like it. It's you never know what the next stand is going to be. I mean, like I guess Anubis was the most normal one. For a long time, but that Just wasn't like, normal at all because it didn't actually have a user. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd say the most kind of straightforward one was possibly um, uh, Geb, and then Duo. It's just like you know, it's just like a, it's metal water. It's just living water. It will murder you and it attacks by a sound. Uh, that that seemed pretty. This, there are clear rules to this thing. We're able to figure it out. Um, mm. Or it's like no, it's just, <laughs> don't know if the sword can possess you. It's a plug can make you into a magnet. Uh, I guess it turns you. <laughs> the shadow turns you into a baby. <laughs> What's happening? You can just go back to the guy. <laughs> the first guy. Just fight nine of him. We 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 need to beat that guy. <laughs> so is this another case of Dio did not save the best for last? Because this guy seems kind of crap. 
I think it seems really good. I mean, like, he was smart enough to bring a gun. I'll give him that. Yeah. yeah. And an axe. Then over, yes. Mm. <laughs> Just got to get that chalet to touch all of them, and then... It's Cause, over. Because it, cause he mentions that it's his, um, Palmer F's stand as a child, because he had his stand, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, he was on. Sport, but, yeah. yeah. So it could, it's possible that he would be the only one who had a stand turned into a child. The other ones may not have. No, not um, have. Abdal would. Cause he had oh, his... Abdal would as well, yes. But, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but he does not so much. Anyway, that ends this week's episode of Let's Go Jojo. So be back here next week for Sets Alessi Part 2. Ooh. And in the meantime, check out our regular podcasts at secretofthesailormadness.blogspot.com and at dynamiteinthebrain.com. Goodbye. Ciao. Very good. <laughs> Oi. Sandbags, windbags, camels with the hump. Fat girls, thin girls, some a little plump. Slave girls sold here, 50 bob a lump in the old bazaar in Cairo. Brandy, shandy, beer without a prop. Braces, laces, a candle for the moth. Bet you'd look a dolly in an old loin cloth in the old bazaar in Cairo. You can buy most any anything. Thimbles, fat cows, a little bit of string. You can purchase anything you wish. A clock. A dish and something for your Auntie Fanny Harem, scare em. what do you think of that? Fanny striptease dancing on the mat. Oompa, oompa. That's enough of that in the old bazaar in Cairo.